If no, I'm um, 20 years old, I'll not go anywhere simple school travel. Oh, oh just school, you're not going again. I would not follow you if you are going to your school. I'll follow you. No, I won't you. be in school when you're 20 years old. Maybe. I'll probably be traveling the world. I'll follow you. Yes, you follow me. Yes. <laughs> Look at you're excited. Yes. This is your friend of mine. This is your friend of mine. One of the things that I didn't get a lot as a growing child was I love you. Not a lot, I didn't get at all. The words I love you said to me. This time I want you to my baby. And then going out into the world, I met people who would end the calls with their parents with the words I love you. <laughs> They will tell their siblings, their brothers, their friends, their best friends, I love you. In fact, the very first time I heard the words, I love you, directed to me, the very first time I can remember, was from a friend. Yeah, in many ways, like, I'm ironing. I'm ironing. So, yeah. I have a shower. I have a shower. I shower twice in my life. And then I started dating, and then boys started saying I love you to me, and then eventually girls. Nice. So I learned about I love you, about tenderness, about sweetness, about softness, physical softness from the outside. So when I started assessing, you know, knowledge, healing, joy, one of the first things I wanted to impact in the life of my younger ones was I love you. All my friends. Mm -hmm. I started with my mom. I started saying I love you to my mom on phone. It was weird at first, I won't lie, it was very, very weird. Even for her, because sometimes she'll hesitate before she says I love you back. You can tell that this was not a familiar language. And then I extended it to my siblings. I stayed with my younger sister, Choma. I started telling Choma I love you over the phone, over text messages. And then one day, I remember I said it to her in person. She didn't reply. <laughs> I said it to her again. <laughs> I said it to her again. And before she replied, there was this pause. She didn't know how to reply. It took her a while for her brain to, you know, realize I can actually say I love you too, and that's the reply. <laughs> but she replied that time. So it became a thing. Once in a while, I'm throwing I love you. When I visit the house and I'm leaving, I say I love you. When she visits me and she's leaving, I'll walk her house, she'll take it back, and I'll shout I love you as she's leaving. So gently, 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 I love you, start entering the language I use with my sister Choma. Once in a while, I say I love you to my brothers. Those ones, <laughs> My brothers, they are another, you know, interesting humans. And to tell you how interesting they are, all the times I've said I love you to my younger brothers, I've never gotten one I love you back. Nada. They just smile it away or <laughs> shrug it away or just walk away. I know it's an unfamiliar language between us, even as I'm trying to teach them and share the language, I can still feel, I can still see how it's very much unfamiliar. But then again, I even think I'll pay for the two weeks, so don't worry. I'll pay after the two weeks, it's just to tell them something. I don't know what part of Nigeria you're from. I don't know what your experience has been growing up in your part of Nigeria. But my experience is I didn't experience a lot of physical intimacy growing up. I didn't experience a lot of hugs. I didn't experience just being able to crumble into somebody's arms and it wasn't sexual. And I'll share with you what the side effect of that was. The side effect of that was I grew up as a person who couldn't differentiate when I just needed a physical care and when I needed to, when I wanted to be sexual. Every time I was physically intimate to the person, it most probably led to sexual intimacy. 
and sometimes people just want to be hugged they don't necessarily want to be fucked they just want a hug growing up i didn't know platonic intimacy was a thing i didn't know i could physically be intimate with a person without it being sexual intimacy i did not know so every time and you know living life living the kind of life i lived i wanted to be held a lot i wanted to cry into somebody's arm a lot so i was constantly or most times I was a target for conscious and unconscious abuse. I would say conscious and unconscious abuse because there were people who consciously meant to harm me or abuse me. For example, the uncle who was supposed to just be working for my mom or something like that. But being a kid growing up who my father flogged me a lot, you know, I, my mother doesn't hug me. I fight with my elder brother a lot. There was no fiscal intimacy. I wasn't getting fiscal intimacy from anywhere. When this uncle, uncle, when this uncle started calling me into his room and touching me and you know even though my mind knew that that was wrong it was happening behind closed doors and what was happening was something i couldn't tell my mother without you know half flipping i didn't necessarily report it to anyone or tell anybody about it because i was getting fiscal attention and care not care someone was touching me someone was holding me someone was letting me sit on their laps even if they were touching me inappropriately as i sat on their laps even if they were telling me to touch their thing to play with their thing as i sat on their laps it was physical intimacy to me as a child it was kind, a kind it was a kind of intimacy to me as a child so i didn't necessarily run from it or report it in fact in fact there will, there will be times I went to check if uncle was around because I knew if uncle saw me, uncle would tell me to come and uncle would give me attention. Do you understand? So when we want to talk about kids being abused, kids being taken advantage of, we have to sometimes start from the home, the environment that these kids are living in. Because sometimes these kids know that they are being taken advantage of or they have a feeling that this is wrong but they won't necessarily call an elder's attention to it because in some way there's something for them do you understand i was a child i was too young to give consent so i it's still abuse even though I would sometimes go and check his uncle around, let uncle see me and call me. But I was a child. I was too young to give consent. So it was non-consexual. So it was abuse. Do you understand? And these things sometimes start from little, little things like physical need, the need for someone to just hold you, for you to just cry, the need for someone to be soft with you, the need for someone to be gentle with you. There are kids who use their two legs and walk into unsafe environments, unsafe situations, because they are looking for some sort of care, attention, fiscal need. So coming back home, growing into myself, realizing I was an elder sister and thinking, how do I want to be an elder sister? One of the things I knew for certain that I wanted to work on for my siblings was, I love you. I needed them to hear it from me. It's tenderness. I needed them to get it from me. I needed them to know he exists at home. He existed close by. So when they go outside, they will not be shocked and surprised by it. They will know how to call out abuse, misuse, maltreatment from, you know, care, attention. They will know the difference. They will know the difference when someone is actually trying to use them. Do you understand? So yes, I'm making this video. I'm sharing once again, bringing into my heart, into my, you know, person to share this part of me with you, to encourage everybody to look around Look around you, look at the people you're loving, look at your siblings, 
Look at your children. Look at the younger ones around you. How can you care for them? How can you break generational causes that plagued you? How can you help them not experience the things you experienced? How can you contribute to the community you are existing in? How can you make sure that the kids in that community don't go through the things you went through? It can be little things like developing the language of I love you with your siblings. It can be little things like working on yourself, the way your parents were shouting at you every time you made a mistake. Do not shout on your siblings. Because you know what happens when you shout at them too. They go outside thinking shouting is normal. People shouting at them is normal. So they will stay when other people shout at them. When you treat your siblings and your children right, they will know the difference between right treatment and wrong treatment. So when they go outside, when people treat them wrong, they will know the difference. But when you treat your children bad, when the standards to which you treat your children, your siblings, are low, when they go outside, best believe that people will even go lower. People will bring shovel and dig, 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 dig deeper. People will treat them bad. And before they will be able to learn and relearn and unlearn, it will be a lot of scars. Before they unlearn all the things that will shift their position in life so they can assess people that will treat them well, they will gather a lot of scars. So, Omo, everybody, charity begins at home. If you want your kids, your younger ones, to have self-esteem, from the house, from the house, don't shut them up when they have an opinion. Don't shout at them. Don't make them feel small. From the house, let them grow their esteem. So when they go outside, it won't be a surprising thing. From the house, hug them. From the house, tell them I love you. So when they go outside and one uncle is saying, I love you, I love you, it won't be a surprising thing. They know it's not love. They know that thing that uncle is saying is not love. They can come back home and tell you even, hey, that uncle that lives in that corner there, said I love you to me, they can come back home and tell you when someone is trying to harm them. But when they get some sort of care or appearance of care or attention or intimacy from people outside, they might not be able to come back home and tell you when they are being harmed because in their head, they might still be rationalizing the harm. They might not even know, it might take them years to call it out as harm. Most of the things that happened to me as a little girl, it took me years to understand, yo, that was wrong, that shouldn't have happened. Honestly, charity begins at home and if we want a better life for our siblings, our younger ones, our cousins, our friends' children, our children, the kids in our neighborhood, the kids in our community, we have to start in the little things in the little things because those little things compound and become the big things say i love you to your younger one today say i love you to your child today say i love you to your mom say i love you to your dad i know it might be weird it might feel weird it might even feel scary i know it feels like that for me too but we want to create a real change within ourselves around ourselves <laughs> with people we love. And change might not always be comfortable. So say that I love you today. Let your heart beat as you're saying it. It's a sign that you're alive. <laughs> say that I love you. Say it. Mommy, I love you. Daddy, I love you. Sister, I love you. Brother, I love you. Sister me, I love you. Brother me, I love you. Onye Nkemu, I love you. I love you is not something that is reserved for people that we meet outside alone or people that we are dating alone or friends that we have made alone. I love you is a language we can share with the family we grew up with. So I hope this video encourages one person or two people, you know, <laughs> to say I love you today. I hope this video encourages you to work on your physical intimacy with your family members. Be intimate, be soft, be gentle. This life is hard enough already. This life is hard enough already. We can all hold each other. We can all hold each other in safety and in warmth. Because last, last, that inside house we know, it is what is inside your house that you know. What is outside now maybe, truly, truly, what is outside now maybe. In most cases, you can't vouch for your security and your care outside. You can't vouch for the intentions outside. 
So hold your younger ones, hug your younger ones, tell them I love you. At least they can feel safe with you. They can feel safe in your arms. They can trust you. They can crumble in your arms. Because the truth is, growing up and not experiencing that, you might not be able to hug people or even be intimate with people. Whenever someone is close to you, you think they want something from you or they want to harm you. It took me a very long time to get used to hugging. It took me a very long time to even accept that I liked being hugged or even, you know, let myself settle into hugs because I was constantly afraid that anybody that came too close to me physically wanted something from me, wanted to have sex with me, wanted to use my body one way or the other. We can't keep praying alone about generational causes. We can't keep acting like, you know, these causes are so spiritual that we cannot see the physicality of it. There are things we can do physically that will help. There are things we can do physically that will actually make these prayers we are praying come true. So I encourage you today, hug your siblings, hug your children, tell them I love you, tell them I love you, tell them I love you, love yourself, be good to yourself, be kind to yourself, be loving, be gentle, learn all those good things with yourself. When you've learned to yourself, then you can share, then you can overflow, then you can bless others for self. It starts with self. Tell yourself I love you. All right? I love you. And you know, you know me. <laughs> you know me. This is your girl. This is your friend. Your friend Amara. Amara, eh, Amara. <laughs> this is your friend Amara. Amara the lesbian. And write I love you before you go. I love you. From me to you. This. <laughs> This is goodbye. Goodbye, people. Bye. <laughs>